Hello my friends, John LaRuva here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode we're going to take a look at the game Mobile Markets. It's a Smartphone Inc. Um, it's not really a sequel, but it's in the same kind of place or genre as the original Smartphone Inc. board game was. This is a um, kind of like a semi-card game, but let's take a look and see how it plays solo, and that way you can figure out if this is a game that maybe you're interested in or not. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can keep building up my fan base. So the nice thing about this game is that even after reading the rules and everything else, you basically follow the steps written right here to figure out exactly how to play each round. The game is played in five rounds, and you literally go through one through six, one, two, one, two, etc., etc., and that really helps kind of make the the game easy to come back to even when you have not played in a little while so just giving that heads up this game um is basically a business simulation game trying to figure out um or you're trying to make the most money possible and what you're trying to do in this game is maximize the number of customers that will buy your phones with the um with the best price that you can pull off, okay? And you, at each turn, each round, there's five rounds of the game, you will configure the kind of phone you're gonna make based on your technologies that you have. You basically can use these slots to configure a phone with certain features. Those features um, will correspond to some customers we'll show here, here in a second. And that will be, they'll meet the requirements of that. Okay, that particular customer wants that feature. Like maybe they want 5G and they also want um, four cameras, right? Or high definition cameras. Okay, perfect. They want that. I need to have a phone that's going to do that. All right. And then the other thing is, is how much is it going to cost? So they're only willing to spend a certain amount of money. Some customers will, will buy anything at that cost and lower. Some will buy anything that is a low cost phone or will pay whatever price it is if it has exactly the same technology you want. And then some will buy it um, if it has everything. So I'll just give you a quick show of that. So this is the kind of customer right here that will buy it only for three bucks or less unless it's three star quality phone and it has that special camera. If it has that, it could be $8 and they'd buy it, all right? This custom right here won't buy it unless it's $4 or less, period. Doesn't need any features, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a phone in that, uh, in that price bracket. And this one will pay top dollar, but it has to have exactly what they're looking for. So it has to have both of those things. And so that's kind of the way the customers work in this game. Oh, of course I dumped it. Um, but anyway, the uh, what you're doing in the solo is you're competing against Steve Jr. here, okay? And Steve Jr. is com um, controlled by a group of cards, and the cards will tell you they will slowly but surely give Steve on the top um, capabilities that will stack up for each of the five rounds. And if you play on easy, he doesn't get a starting card. If you play on normal, he gets a starting card. If you play on hard, he gets two starting cards. And then it'll tell you exactly what Steve's gonna do in each of the numbered rounds, okay? Making it fairly easy to understand what he's going to do. Now, I will say that it does get a little complex after a while, and maybe it'll, you get, you know, some of these are not so bad, but as you start stacking things up, as you can see here, there's a lot to consider. You know, this, by the time we get to round three, okay, so it'll be round one, two, and three, every phone that Steve makes has all this, but it also says Steve's got two stars on his product, plus the others, ignore the first dollar on his features, ignore two dollars on features, etc. So it just starts stacking this up, making it a little bit slightly complex. However, it's not a gripe, it just takes some familiarity with it, okay? And Steve is controlled by a group of cards, um, which makes the uh, situation pretty simple. So the last thing I'm going to show you is, you have a board here. The board, this is where you set your net profit, okay? which is gonna be the amount you charge minus the cost of the phone. The base cost is always one, and then you're gonna have one more for each of these features that you put on if it's, a, if it's a one feature. Some of them are free, like that car right there is free, and I think some of them even cost two, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, if you fill this third feature slot, you have to add an additional cost, okay? So that's how you do it. You basically do price you're charging minus the cost, gives you the unit, the profit per sale. 
And then you're gonna also have this track here, which is gonna determine how many phones you're gonna make in each round. And Steve Jr. is gonna do the same thing. Now, how do you figure that out? This is the cool little mechanic that for those in the original, or who remember the original smartphone game, they had a little pad here. You basically have some rules governing how you have to cover up things. Basically, you have to take these two tiles, they're double-sided, and you have to make sure that at least one space is covered on them. For everything that you cover, you actually produce an additional good, um, and then the rest of the symbols dictate what you're going to do. So, um, in this case right here, when it would be time, this I'll show you this in the planning, but when it would be time to finish planning, I would produce one good for this, plus one under here, plus some on the event cards, which we'll talk about that in a second. And that, that'd be how many goods I produce. I would get two technology points. I would have to raise my price one, two, three. So a base of five would be all the way to eight. And then I'd have three of these marketing points. Maybe I wouldn't want to do that because that'd be probably pretty difficult from a standpoint of selling. But you can see that the cards and how you put them um, together can offer some pretty interesting choices. Okay, so besides that, I think it's best for me just to, I'll get into the game, come back in a couple of rounds, and then I will go ahead and demonstrate a full round to you and then tell you my thoughts. Okay, so we're gonna start round three now. I've played two rounds already. And as you can see, things are pretty tight between um, myself and the uh, solo player, not too far off. I had a big turn that last turn, which put, put me a, a little bit ahead, but it depends on how things go. It can get swingy. All right, so we'll find out, uh, or we'll, we'll figure out how to play. I'll show you how it works. The first thing we do is we're gonna reset to five here. And this is also our turn order. The turn order goes from left to right. So whoever chooses the cheaper price will actually go first in every phase except for marketing. Okay, so we start there. We reveal the top event card. Now the event cards will tell us a couple things. Number one, they're going to tell us, they're always, I think they always say you're going to increase your base production by this one crate, but also will show us which customers are coming to the market, and it's going to tell us something special about what's going on. So in this case, there's no bonus for market share this round. So there was no bonus at all. Um, so that means that what, that what that means is down here, you're not going to get a very nice 8 or 4 or 2, in the case of the solo, 8 or 4. Whoever produ produces the most during this round would normally get $8, and the second most would normally get 4 but this says not gonna happen, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and put that over there. Then it says discard all of the cards out here that have a minus one on them, all right? So that means all of these are gonna be discarded, plus anything that costs just one goes away. And these minus ones come on, as I'll show you, so. And I had a special event card that added a ton of additional marketing cards to the deck last time. So there's going to be a couple extra out here. I'm not going to be refilling it. All right. And then let's just put these over here so we can get them. Okay. Then it says add the minus tokens to anything left over. So that makes these a little bit more attractive to buy. Everything's on sale there. And these are now cheaper. And then we, re we reveal new cards. So four to this market. It's usually four and four. Like I said, we had extra there. And then six to this one, the, the actual technology to make the phone market there. Okay. And that's my discard pile and things over there. Now, I'm going to add customers according to this chart here that grows and ebbs and flows a little bit. So basically, whatever customers didn't get sold to last time, they stick around, including private customers that you might have in your hand. I have these customers down here. They're a little off camera. It's just hard to fit everything. But the private customers basically sit um, and wait for you to fulfill their needs and you keep them as long as you can. You also have to sell to them first before you sell to the general market. So it's kind of a nice thing to have a bunch of private customers since you kind of don't have to worry as much about turn order and you can configure what you're doing. All right, so we're gonna have two of these V customers here, all right? Okay, and then so that's, I'm just gonna put that over there for space. Now we have two, three, four regular customers. For ours, so that's a four also. We're just gonna put it in there. That's a five. 
and a six. Okay, one, two, three, and one more, a five. All right, so we've got those in there. And then we're gonna have three of the C customers here. So that's eight and an eight and a seven. Okay, so now we have added the new customers. These are the customers that are gonna be available in the market looking to buy a phone plus any private customers that you have. We're gonna move on to planning. In the planning stage is this is where I use these things to figure out what I want to do. So I have a couple things to consider. Number one, we're midway through the game. So both of us have a decent amount of technology that we can build into our phone. He's got uh, three icons. I've got three icons, which means I can probably hit up some of these. All right. And I can also hit up these by overcharging them as long as I have what they want. Now in this case, I don't have an 8K and I don't have the special camera, but there are plenty of those available. So I need to make sure I have at least three technology points, which are these, to be able to buy that card. And because I'm gonna end up putting a bunch of money into this stuff, it's gonna be tight on the actual amount that I'm gonna drop my price. So what I think I might do is I might risk it a little bit. I, I kind of think five is the right price, maybe six. So six would get me a couple of these things faster than he would go. I'm gonna go with six. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna set it up like this, all right? So I'm going to end up producing one, two, three, four. Remember I produce ones that I cover up. So that's four, five, six, seven. That's gonna be seven produ production uh, phones when I do the job. But I get these four technology, which I really need. I up the price one, and I get one marketing token. So that's the that's the configuration I'm going to employ here. And we'll just put it over here so you can see that. Now we flip his card and see what he does. So he gets another star, and his says ignore one dollar on all of the or on the features. So what that means is is that he from now on for the rest of the game is going to produce with a base manufacturing cost of one less, or a feature cost I should say of one less. It says price five, so he stays where he is. I went with price six, so I went up one because of that. That's the pricing side of things. So he's gonna go first. So now we go to technology. His card says, discard the highest cost leftmost technology card. So that is going to be this one. Actually, it's gonna be this one because this is higher cost than that, which is unfortunate, but that's the deal. That's the action he's going to take. Now I take the one that I want. Now I have four. You can actually bank some technology from round to round if I don't spend it all, which might be helpful. I need the 8K, and it'd be nice to have the 8K and the 5G. It'd be better than this. I would lose a star. So I can buy any number of these that I want. What is that one? That's the flip phone 5G. That's that. What I will do in the interest of time is go ahead and I'm going to buy this to get the 8K plus this. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to get this. This is going to cost me three. All right. So now I have the ability to do that. And with my leftover one, I can't afford any of these, which some of these are really nice. So it's, it's tough, but I'm going to have to take one of these right here and I will save it for later. Okay. So that's the marketing phase. I'm sorry, that's the technology phase. Now the marketing phase, I, because it's reverse turn order, will be able to buy one right there if it costs one, which I do have some options here. So I can say, uh, this one is in profit. Get $1 for each different customer, I'm sorry, for each different price on customers in your sales pile. That's kind of cool. Or get $3 if you sell all of your goods. Also pretty good. Or get $1 for each star in your products. That's less good. Hmm. I'll probably do this one just to try this out. So we're gonna get this. That means I'm gonna get a bonus for selling different pricing on different things. So that's during profit. So I'm gonna stack this right here because both of these are during the profit section and I'll remember to do that. Now also in marketing, if I didn't spend anything, I could take customers here to my private, um, my private sector or whatever you want to say, but I do have these two cards here that allow me to take one of these and one of these from the deck because of previous marketing things. So these will be available to me to sell to. And that's actually nice because I just took something that gives me a variety for selling to people who 
have different costs or prices. So very good. All right, and what's he going to do? Now he is going to say it's take two private regular customers from the deck. So he's going to take two of these. He also has a special ability right now that each of his private customers um, consider him to have a sales price of $2 lower. So that means he's going to be able to sell both of, to both of those this term. So that is the marketing phase. Now we go to production. We're going to see how many we produced. So like I said, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I produced eight phones this round. He's going to produce, it says four plus the number on the event card. So he, he's going to produce seven. All right, so he's made seven. And that's all you do there for production. Now sales. Now we're going to create a product by placing these kind of technologies out here. This is where you try to figure out who you're going to be able to get and how. And like I said, I needed the 8K and the 5G to attract those guys. So that's a guarantee. So I'm definitely going to put this card in. It's going to raise my cost to make the phone by one. Um, and then I also need a, um, let's see, 8K and 5G for sure. And maybe that's all I want to do because I can even get him and I can't get her because she wants three stars. But I think that's it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to try to make a really specific phone here and that way not, um, not have a really tough time with the costs and try to maximize my profit. So I'm just going to do that. My base uh, cost would be two, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, actually, we'll get to that right now. So my cost or my price was six minus the two it cost me to make is a net profit of four. So that means every, every customer I sell to, I'm going to get four. Now what he's going to do is he's going to sell all free features and up to two with um, costs associated. So he basically sells with everything. But he ignores one of those costs. So in his case, he's at five minus two is three. So he is going to have a net profit of three per. Now he sells first because he's cheaper. And that means that anybody who has got, uh, who has a, a number here that is um, five or greater will immediately buy. Now we talked about those private customers, right? These are fours. Normally they wouldn't buy from him, but because of his special ability saying they'll, they consider his price one lower, they will buy from him. So that's two of my seven for him. Then we're going to get the fives. Well, we actually, you start from the, the highest price and go down. So two of the seven, and then he has on his technology, he's got 5G, he's got the security thing, and he's got the flip phone. Um, that's going to gobble up him. That's unfortunately going to gobble up him because of the 5G. So that's two more. So now we're at four. So he's going to sell to three more customers, and it's going to be the um, six, the five, and the five. So that's punitive right because he went first he took a bunch of those customers away from me and now i've got to figure out how i'm going to sell the eight customers hopefully to maximize my profits well first of my private ones this guy's going to go because my price is six so he's happy he would pay up to seven so he's going to pay for that plus i have the 5g so that's one same deal with this he'd pay up to eight so that's two same deal with him even though his is three if it's 5G and three, oh shoot, three stars, darn. Nope, I don't have three stars. So we're not gonna be able to sell to him. So this is not gonna go well for me at all because of what he did. This guy will buy because of the 8K. So that means I only sold three phones. Now, luckily 8K is over here. That's four phones. 8K and 5G over here, five. So, <clears throat> That didn't go so hot. I only sold five of my eight that I produced. So a little less efficient than I should have been. Okay? Now, that's the situation. That's how many sold. Now we go to our profit. He sold seven, right? So seven times three is 21. Normally, we would get this market bonus here, but because of the event, we don't do that. No, no bonus here. So he just makes $21, which is going to put him at 51 for a total score so far. I sold one, two, three, four, five for four dollars a piece. That's twenty dollars. So I go to 64. So I'm still winning. So basically, you saw what happened here. I sold 
I sold to more cust or less customers, but because of the price was more, my net profit was more. Um, he only beat me by one dollar, one dollar that time. So that this turn order is extremely important, but so is the balance of how much you're going to put into your phone and how much you're going to charge, etc. I mean, that is really the meat and potatoes of the game for the most part. Okay, so those customers have been sold to, so we just hold on to them for any potential end game scoring. The profit's done. Now we resolve any of these effects that we might have. Like this says, take one uh, private from the deck if you don't sell all your phones, which I didn't. And this says, get $1 for each different price on your customers in your sales pile. So <clears throat> I'm gonna assume, I'm not gonna look that up right now, that that's a sales pile for that round. Two, three, four, five. Pretty sure it is, otherwise that'd be ridiculous. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four types of prices so that'd be four dollars so four bonus points and that is it so that is the round we would reset we would have two more rounds and then the game would be over and the person who has the most money wins so hopefully that gives you a full look at how one round of the entire solo game looks all right well that was mobile markets from a solo perspective now let me give you a couple thoughts on this game from my standpoint. First of all, the <clears throat> even though it's a small, well, small card game, it is definitely a table hog. So don't expect to play this. On, I mean, you could see how this sprawls, and as the customers come down, it really can make a lot of room, so to speak, on your table. Um, but that's not the end of the world. It's just don't let the small box fool you or think that because this is a, you know, doesn't have a board, so to speak, it's not going to be big nitpick small thing i don't care at all um the component quality is good i like the way the components look that you saw my uh um my unboxing i mentioned it there i really like this business simulation i actually like it more than the base game the base game was good no no problem there um but there was some area um control and there was some different locations and stuff and that was fine that's made for its own game um, which is good. I mean, I like that one, and I still have that one in my possession, and I still like to play it solo. Um, it's just fine. But this is, I think, a, bo a better business simulator or market simulator game. This one really focuses on uh, the specifics of what kind of phone you're going to make, the net profit of that phone, uh, based on your selling price plus the manufacturing costs which I like that, or sorry, minus the manufacturing costs. There you go. Now you know, hey, I can make this whiz-bang phone, but it's going to cost me a lot more, and am I going to lose money, you know, profit-wise? I think that's fantastic. I also think it's really cool how the customers come out, and when they come out, they want different things, or they'll pay a different price, or both. I love the turn order and the angst playing against Steve Jr. You never really know, because his, turn, his amount of price that he's going to pay is completely... I mean, I'm sure there's a sp spread in the cards, right? But it could be anything. It could be anything that comes out. And I'm specifically not going to memorize the cards because I don't really want to know the distribution. There's more cards in the deck than will come out. I think there's like 15 or 16 or something more than that. I, I have to look it up. But you're only going to see five of them or, yeah, five of them plus any of the starting ones in the game. So you really have no way to know uh, what he's going to do, which is perfect because that's exactly the kind of of head game you get with a multiplayer you might be able to guess a little bit more there but i don't want to guess with him i want to i want to have to look at it and say what is the worst case scenario or the best case scenario and i'm going to weigh those two when i decide to set my my price and my planning i love these little planning things they're super fun i mean it's small but it's a nice little gimmick that you know you cover things and you see how much you want to reveal and then it, it determines how much you're going to produce i love that i think it's really cool um, I like the fact, pardon me for bumping the camera, I really like the fact that um, there's other things in the game that don't feel tacked on, like those purple cards and the marketing cards. They they add, um, uh, I wouldn't say variety to the game, and also spice to the game, because without those, it would be the same type of kind of thing over and over, which you know, what do I want to do? How do I want to produce it? How much maximize my profit? And I could see some people thinking that's a little dry, but I like that those other cards are there to be able to offer you um, specific ways to kind of go in on a specific strategy and, and maximize one thing or another. And I like how some of those marketing cards can help you get more private um, 
private uh, contracts because that's cool. It kind of takes the edge off. You know, I, I would have really been doomed in that art round you saw had I not had some of those private contracts there that I could sell to, private customers, pardon me. So I like how they do that. I like that you can um, make that happen. I, uh, I, I really don't have any negative things to say about this being a business simulation game. I think it's fantastic. I think that playing against the solo is fantastic. It's very easy to do. You just read the cards. I love how they wrote the steps into the game. Thank you. Because there, it, otherwise it would be a constant back and forth looking at a player aid minutia. This puts it right on the card. And, you know, I know sometimes you want language independent this and that. But in this game, I'm so glad that it is not language independent. I'm so glad that the, it literally walks you through the steps each time. It speeds up the game and makes it more accurate. And you can focus on gameplay, not, okay, here's the steps. And I got to look over here and then look back over there. It's just right where it needs to be. I think they did a great job there. So the only negative I would have is if you don't like business simulator games, then you won't like this one. Some people could say, wow, this is kind of dry. It's just, you know, cell phone manufacturing and there's nothing like the other game. There's no, you know, um, area placement and you're not trying to fight over different regions and things like that. And that's what that game does. The, the original Smartphone Inc. does all that. This one focuses on the business aspect. And I like that a lot, too. I think that you could own both of these and enjoy both of them. It's not necessarily one or the other. And I think the only reason that you wouldn't like a game like this is because you don't like business simulation games. You don't like economic games. You don't like games with supply and demand and how you want to, you know, set your price and things like that. This is the game that I was waiting for um, in my collection, and I didn't know it was going to be this one. So I really like it. You can tell I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to play it anytime I want to play a nice, tight business simulation game that can have, you know, real ramifications for making mistakes on how you set your price and what you do. I think that's great. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Whatever you play in the future, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.